Hello everyone, it's Kay here and I'm here today with just a little tutorial to wet the mojo, hopefully um, ignite that crafty thing that keeps us all ticking over. I always find that post Christmas, New Year and all the rest of it, the things tend to take a bit of a while to settle back in again to crafting and so I'm here today to do a tutorial not necessarily for the diehards who craft all the time but perhaps for the newer um, crafty group out there that is just looking for something small and pretty to start off the crafting year with and it's nothing new it's been out there for a long long time but I just thought perhaps for anybody struggling to come up with something um, quick and simple to do, ideal for racks, ideal for the little thing that's going around on Facebook whereby five people comment on a comment that you make on Facebook and then throughout the year you undertake to send the first five people that comment a little gift. It's ideal for that kind of thing. What the what you need to make it is minimal. You can use scraps, you can use anything that you've got lying around to decorate and it is just such a lovely little gift when it's all packaged. So you start out with a piece of good quality card. You want something that's about 160, 180 GSM just something that is quite substantial although it does fold up nicely to um, it strengthens as it goes with your decoration and that kind of thing so your cardstock is nine and a half by three and a half you can make it longer you can make it wider it's entirely up to you but this is what I'm doing today and then you put it to your scoreboard and you score at four, you score again at eight, eight and a half, nine, and that is all the scoring you need to do on the long side, which is perfectly, perfectly wonderful. And we're almost there in that short time. This is the base of what you are going to be making. You then fold and burnish all of your score lines like so and that's your central one at four inches. The three score lines at the end here you're going to mountain and valley starting with the first one which is toward the front of the work of the card stock and then the second one which is away from you and the third fold which comes towards you and you just need to um, burnish them very very well because these actually as you'll see in a moment form the stand for what we are doing. You then put some adhesive or your most favourite sticky tape onto the bottom of that layer. My scissors are needing a good old clean trim it like so. Peel off the backing which I will do. I'm determined and then just holding it there you bring that top bit. Oh, what have I done here? Something not quite right. But you bring that top bit down to that area that you've put your adhesive onto and you glue those two edges together lining them up very very carefully take your time with it don't rush like me for the sake of the um, video so what you end up then is this tent fold aspect with the gap there and then you fold it all together, crease it again 
and you end up with that scenario. Now I have obviously swapped from the one that I haven't quite anchored down properly here because I have anchored it the wrong way. What you need to do is have, if I show you on this one, sorry, you end up with two straight edges like so and then a tent fold gap in the centre there. If I come in a little bit you'll be able to see better what I'm talking about. You end up with that scenario so that then acts like a stand for your little tent piece here. You then need some DSP depending on how much of a border you want around it. All I've done is taken off an eighth of an inch all the way around. Or is it a little bit more? Mm -hmm. No, I have. I've just cut enough around. So if you if you reduce your decorative area, which is four by four. No. No, it's not four by four and I haven't got my um, ruler. Hold on a moment, let me just measure it. So that's one. That decorative area amounts to four inches along the top by four inches square is it? Sorry I was hoping to do this quite quickly but I'm fluffing it as you can tell. Three and a half inches across the top by four and a half inches in length so that makes your DSP four and three quarters by three and a quarter if you want to keep it really simple so that's what we've what we're going to do here you then get your glue any glue that suits anything that you've got to hand and you would just then decorate the front part like so if it's directional paper make sure that it's going in the right direction and lay that into that clear area like so because this then becomes the front of your little holder like so and then working upside down I hope I am going to apply this year's calendar and I got a pack of these from an office outlet. I think they were only 50p for 10, which is silly money. You place that then with a little border either side onto the base of the little tent fold like so. And then decorate to taste. Now I've kept this fairly, fairly simple. I've just used some scraps from a 6x6 um, paper pad that I had left over. I've gone through my dies and just found a little something that will decorate this really really prettily without too much fuss and finagle because at the end of the day what you want at this stage is just something that is going to be cheerful and pretty and effective when it's done. I've got my little bit of foam here and I'm just going to use my ball tool to alter it up a little bit and make sure that it's not flat. It needs a bit of dimension just to keep it in order. And then just simply, I've got, a, I've got two layers here, I cut two together because I wanted the DSP and I wanted that to be quite firm as the base. So I've just anchored those together in the centre there. A little bit of glue inside of that. 
to add the second layer and if it's something like this then clearly you want to offset which means putting the spikes from one flower between the spikes of the base flower and then I have a navy blue because the base of the card uh, of the calendar holder is blue so I should just offset that again very very carefully just so that you've got those lovely spiky layers going on you may choose to put um, a flower a pre-made flower onto the um, front here it is a personal taste thing I'm just showing you today how very very easy it is to put something like this together oops a daisy I've got a little flat back pearl here and all I want to do is pop a little bit of glue there because actually the um, I've left the sticky backing these are very very old I've left the sticky backing Oh, and I don't like that either. Wait one, wait one. I think I'm going to take that navy blue off. It's not cut properly. I don't have a smaller one, so I'm going to have to use white again. Just to put that in the centre. That really wasn't finished very well at all. Some of the um, little edges of the flower haven't stuck at all or cut out at all well like so okay I'm just pushing that down into the pad again as you can see just applying some pressure foo-fooing up the flower so I'm telling it very clearly how I want it to look and then a little bit of glue on the back just to anchor that down like so and that as they say is it in all its glory you can needless to say apply a bit of decoration on the back I've actually cut out another bit of the DSP here it's not as wide I'm having awful trouble with these silly scissors. It's not as wide. I think this is, let me just measure for you very quickly. This piece is three and three quarters by two, two and a half. And this is purely scraps. So I shall just put some glue on the back of this like so make sure my print is going the same way again I'm just going to put that in the center of that back panel and anchor that down and what I've also got here is a little tag which you can again anchor onto the back like so or just make a little hole in it or add a flower to it like this in fact I'll do that so you can see what I'm gabbling on about I'm just going to fold that bit over there because I do want the person who gets this to understand that they can lift it up and put a message on the back for someone a little bit of gubbins in that little area there and then that can just sit on the back like so so you've got a decorative front and a decorative back and it really does just make such a wonderful little gift you just then put the page put the recipient's name a, a little message either directly onto the back here or underneath to keep it personal or private <coughs> and that is that really really effective 
I've then got a cello bag here so you can see it when it's all <coughs> excuse me when it's all put into the wrapping I had a cello bag and this is what happens when you try to get things done here it is so with the back part the bit that would fold up and seal on the on your working surface put the front of your little calendar holder into the bag press down clearly so that it stays where you want it to be fold up the edge so that the recipient can then undo it from the base <coughs> excuse me to um, open it and then I've got a tiny, tiny topper here. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is just, I've put some red line tape in strategic places. Because obviously I want this to look pretty when it reaches its destination. And I'm going to lay that onto my mat like so add my cello bag with all the seals and everything to the back oh. get it right Kate oh dear what a fluff <coughs> oh dear hold on let's get it right shall we so that goes on there like that and that then goes on there like that and you have a lovely, lovely presentation for the gift that you've put together. And it really is as simple as that. It is about layering. It is about getting your base right so that you're able then to pop it into a flat envelope and send it without it costing an arm and a leg to whoever you choose to send it to. So I'll show you some other ones that I've made. And I've just used glitter paper here and used gold and white, but it's the same principle as I've done. I've just utilized scraps of paper from end of pads and that kind of thing. So it really is a great way of using up your scraps. Here's another one, and just that little bit of glitter and mirror board does add to the overall effect, as I'm sure you can see. There's another one in pink and gold and white. And another, because this girl just never stops at making one of anything. She always gets herself a little production line going and works to it until you, you know I've I've completed all the cutout bits that I've done and that kind of thing but they are truly so effective lovely little gifts and I'm sure anyone that's the back of that one would appreciate this done up in a nice little bag I mean clearly you wouldn't be able to send it out too far into the year but with it being these very small calendars it is so easy just to rip off the facing page and get to where you want to be so you know I guess maybe February at the latest perhaps to send it off to anyone but I just think they're lovely lovely little gifts and when you then see them packaged and put together nicely it does make a lovely little gift to send out for someone that actually doesn't cost an arm and a leg to do. So apart from the fluffy start, which I do apologise for, um, I hope you've managed to get the gist of, of what I've tried to achieve here and that you, if you're needing a little tickle to the mojo, will feel inspired and feel the need to have a go at these yourself. So happy crafting everyone. Let's have a really, really great 2019 on the cut craft front. There are so many lovely initiatives underway at the moment. 
to get people sending out to one another and keeping the inspiration fires burning. So I hope I've helped with that somewhat. Happy crafting everyone. Take care for now. Bye bye.